we are going to be breaking down the 460 Smith & Wesson based on 10 different categories, so let's get to it. Let's face it, most people aren't going to buy a gun chambered in a specific cartridge unless that cartridge has a lot of factory options. So the question is, how many different factory options are there for the 460 Smith & Wesson, at least on Midway? So if we click on the 460 Smith & Wesson, we see that there are currently 18 different options, which places the 460 Smith & Wesson at a factory option score of 4 out of 10. So the 460 Smith & Wesson might not be the most popular handgun cartridge out there, but one thing that we have to keep in mind is that if you have a revolver chambered in the 460 Smith & Wesson, you also have the option of shooting the 45 Long Colt as well as the 454 Casul, so you have quite a few options at your disposal, unlike some other revolver cartridges, should I say the uh, 500 Smith & Wesson? It's too late. Shit has already hit the fan and it's headed straight for the wall. No more hiding, you need to run. The only problem is you can only carry so much weight on foot and you only set aside 10 pounds for ammo. So the question becomes, if you were to take a 460 Smith & Wesson, how many rounds would you be able to carry? So we just went over how there are 18 different factory loads for this cartridge, and obviously they're going to vary in weight quite a bit. But this load right here, this 200 grain FTX loaded by Hornady, seems to be the quintessential load for the 460 Smith & Wesson. So let's see how much it weighs. All right, so throwing this thing on the scale, we see that it weighs... 396 grains even. So if we plug this number into our handy dandy calculator, we get just about 177 rounds. That is way better than I was thinking. This place is a 460 Smith & Wesson at a weight score of 5 out of 10, which is actually pretty decent. If the scenario was this bad, I would maybe consider taking a 460 Smith & Wesson. The only question is, although I could carry 177 rounds, would I actually be able to afford 177 rounds? So you bought a 460 Smith & Wesson, now you're at the store looking for ammo, and the question you have to ask yourself is, do I really want to feed my children tonight, or do I want this box of ammo? Tough decision for sure, and I'm not telling you which way to go, but the only reason it's really a decision in the first place is because 460 ammo is so freaking expensive. In fact, the cheapest option that I could find on Midway right now is $1.45 a round. Wait a second, I've never seen that stuff on the shelves, and it looks like it's discontinued. Realistically, the cheapest round on Midway right now is $2.40 a round, which places a 460 Smith & Wesson at an affordability score of 3 out of 10. That is pretty freaking terrible, and keep in mind that's on the cheap end. Most loads would give it a 2 out of 10 or even a 1 out of 10, and at that point, you're basically throwing a children's meal downrange every time you pull the trigger. So you may be wondering to yourself, well, what about reloading for the 460 Smith & Wesson? There are two metrics that I use to get a reloadability score. Number one, how many different load recipes are currently listed on the Hodgdon website? And number two, how many different bullet options are currently listed on Midway's website right now? Anyway, the Hodgdon website currently has 96 different load recipes for the 460 Smith & Wesson, so it gets a 2 out of 5 in this section. In case you didn't know, the 460 Smith & Wesson uses .452 inch diameter bullets, which why they would name it the 460, I have no idea, but you know, that's just what they did. Anyway, if we click on this diameter on Midway, we see that there are currently 38 different different bullet options, which places it at a 2 out of 5 on this section as well, bringing the total reloadability score to a 4 out of 10. Regardless of what this score is, you can save a bunch of money reloading the 460 Smith & Wesson. It may even be enough to where you can feed your kids and go to the range on the same day. I mean, I'm not promising anything, but, you know, the possibility's there. With great power comes great responsibility. And boy, does the 460 Smith & Wesson have some power. I looked over all 18 loads that are currently listed on the Midway website, and the most powerful one that I could find for the 460 Smith & Wesson is a 360 grain Underwood load, producing 2,860 foot-pounds. 2,860 foot-pounds! I mean, come on now, that's slightly more powerful than the 500 Smith & Wesson load that I found from the last time, which places the 460 Smith & Wesson at a power score of 6 out of 10, which is absolutely insane for a handgun. With great power also comes great recoil. Now when we're talking about recoil, obviously there's a lot of different factors that come into play, so in order to keep things fair between all cartridges, I use an 8 pound firearm as a reference. A big portion, well honestly a giant portion of the recoil is going to come from the specific load that we're using, so how about we use the Underwood load from before to get a worst case scenario. Alright, plugging the numbers in, we get 
30.98 foot-pounds of recoil, which is about double what a 6.5 Creedmoor is doing. This may seem like a lot of recoil, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not a crazy amount of recoil, so the 460 Smith & Wesson gets a recoil score of 6 out of 10, which really isn't too bad. But revolvers don't weigh 8 pounds. Well, I mean, this one is way closer than you would think it would be to 8 pounds. But anyway, let's see how the 460 Smith & Wesson compares to the recoil of other revolver cartridges. Up first, we got the 45 Colt. Was there anything even in there? Now we're stepping it up quite a bit to the 454 Casul. That was definitely a handful right there. And finally, we have the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. That was a little worse than the 454 Casul, but really not that much different. So you go to the range and there are 10 other guys there. If you pull out one of these, how many of those guys are going to have a banana in their pocket after seeing the 460 Smith & Wesson? Chances are, if you have a 460 Smith & Wesson, you probably have something like this. This absolutely massive revolver. And as soon as you pull out one of these things, you could probably expect something like this to happen. Dude, is that a 500 Smith & Wesson? What, this? No, this is a 460 Smith & Wesson. Wait, what? What? Why, why wouldn't you buy a 500? Maybe because the 460 Smith & Wesson is better. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? Uh, yeah. Well, did you know that this thing right here can fire three different cartridges? Can your 500 Smith & Wesson do that? Huh? Needless to say, the second you tell them that it's not a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, you can expect that at least two of those bananas are going to disappear almost instantly, which is why the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum is getting a banana factor score of 8 out of 10. Guys, this is still one of the coolest handgun cartridges that you can own. Let's pull out the good old ear of judgment to figure out just how suppressible the 460 Smith & Wesson is. Suppressibility? What suppressibility? Unless you're shooting this thing out of an ultra expensive lever action that you had threaded or a Thompson Center Encore or something like that, you're not going to be able to suppress a 460 Smith & Wesson. And if you're shooting one at an indoor gun range, prepare for the loudest experience of your life. I would highly recommend doubling up on your hearing protection if you're shooting one at an indoor gun range. But anyway, there are a few rifles that you could buy and have threaded like I had mentioned before and theoretically suppress them, which I have seen done before, which is why I'm giving the 460 Smith & Wesson a suppressibility score of 3 out of 10. Definitely not a good score. I think the load with the longest range capabilities for the 460 is going to be this 200 grain FTX. Wait, wait a second. 0.145 BC? Get out of here. Okay, the load with the longest range capabilities for the 460 Smith & Wesson is going to be this Barnes 275 grain XPB with a BC of 0.215. Not great, but it's what we have to work with. Plugging this into a ballistic calculator, we get a maximum supersonic range of about 300 yards. This gives the 460 Smith & Wesson a range score of 3 out of 10, which is pretty terrible, but then again, it's a big bore revolver. Or what were we expecting? With a conventional bullet, let's see just how much mild steel the 460 Smith & Wesson can go through. Did that actually go through a quarter inch of mild steel? Oh my gosh, that is crazy for a handgun. I guess we have to step it all the way up to 3 eighths of an inch because it went straight through that quarter inch of mild steel. That is absolutely insane for a handgun. Well, it couldn't quite handle 3 eighths of an inch, but a quarter inch is freaking insane. Quarter inch, that is pretty freaking impressive for a handgun if I do say so myself. I. With how clean of a hole it blew through here, I thought it had a chance of going right through the 3 8 inch as well, but that was just too much for it. Anyway, check out that hole right there. That's about as clean as can be. And that's why the 460 Smith & Wesson is getting a steel score of 4 out of 10, which is about the highest that any production handgun is going to get. I'm not talking about your Thompson Center pistols chambered in rifle calibers. Obviously those are going to go through more steel. <laughs> So if we total up the points from each one of the categories, the 460 Smith & Wesson ends up with a total score of 46 out of 100, placing it one point behind the 500 Smith & Wesson. But guys, if I'm being honest, 
The 460 Smith & Wesson is my favorite revolver cartridge out there. If you want one of these monstrous revolver cartridges for some reason, I would definitely recommend checking the 460 Smith & Wesson out. It may not be a 50 cal, but it is super versatile. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Thank you.